A provisional cast on is a great way to start a piece of knitting that you can then unravel the cast on and either continue knitting or join the knitting up using Kitchener Stitch. And I like to use what's called a crochet cast on. That's the easiest way. I think it's also easiest to do and it's also easiest to undo, which is important when you're gonna, when you know you're gonna undo your cast on. So just take a piece of scrap yarn about the same weight as the yarn you're, yarn you're going to be using for your project and a crochet hook that's about the right size and all you need is a six inch tail we're going to do a slip knot if you don't remember how to do a slip knot that's okay just take a loop like this make a twist like that and then reach through your loop and pull up another loop like that put the slip knot on your crochet hook and you're going to need just one of your knitting needles for this so take your knitting needle like that and tension the working yarn like this and tension it in your left hand. I mean you can do it like this if you're not used to using your left hand. That's fine too. I like to tension it like this like I'm knitting. Like that. Now lay the yarn behind the knitting needle like that and keep your crochet hook to the right like this and then use your finger if you need to to stabilize the knot on there. Okay. What we're going to do is basically make a crochet chain all the way up this knitting needle like this. The, knit, the crochet hook comes under the yarn like that, twist up like this to hold it. Now pull that loop through the slip knot on your needle, just like that. Alright, there you've put one stitch on your needle. Now move the working yarn behind the knitting needle, just like that, to the back again, and we're going to begin again, okay? Stabilize this uh, loop right here. Move everything down so you have some more room. Crochet hook comes underneath, just like this around to the back, twist so that it holds it on there. Now pull it through the loop like that. Whoops, there you go. Now see how this yarn is going to go ahead and move through my fingers as I do that? That's good, right? Because you need yarn in order to make loops. If it doesn't move through your fingers, it's going to be like uh, really tight like that, okay? So what do we do next? Go ahead and move the yarn to the back like this. Scoot everything down and begin again underneath and pull through letting the yarn slide, just like that. And let's see, use my fingers to get the yarn to the back, underneath, and pull through. And you can see we've got this chain of stitches that's gonna be really easy to undo later. So let's do a few more. When you have enough stitches for your project, let's see, how many do I have? 10 stitches. What you can do is just make this loop a little bit bigger, just pull that and let it hang just like that. That's all you need to do. Um, it's nice when you leave that loop there because it's really easy to undo later on just by pulling that loop. So now what you can do is take your other knitting needle and go ahead and knit your stitches using whatever yarn you need for your project. Let's see. I've got some turquoise yarn. You can just start it by leaving a tail like that hanging down and pulling a loop through to begin. There we go. Alright. And we're knitting with the new yarn. There we go. <laughs> and you can tighten up this loop just by... Oh dear. <laughs> I told you it was easy to undo, right? Okay. That's good for now. Alright, so keep knitting all the way across your row and we will see what happens when it's time to undo the cast on at the end of the project. I've knitted a few rows with my project yarn and then I've actually gone ahead and bound off just to get the needle out of the way so we can see what's happening. Although your project will often call for you to just go ahead and bind off and then get the live stitches. So here's the tail. We're just going to pull that loop that we had and keep pulling carefully. Get that out of the way. If you have some delicate unplied yarns like what I have, they may try to felt together like that. You can just keep them separate with your fingers. But there you can see our little loops forming that we were saving all along. So just keep pulling like that carefully. And you can go in and, and put your needle in one at a time but I actually think this sometimes is a little safer. Then we can pull that one and all the yarn will come out. 
like that. So now you've got live loops. Go ahead and take your knitting needle and thread them through just carefully. Notice I'm holding the stitches underneath like that. That prevents them from getting pulled out like that. And also you can notice that I am not paying attention to the direction, oops, the direction that these stitches are facing. Right now I'm just trying to get the loops on the needle. All right, so, and we've got 10 stitches again, which is great, that's how many we started with. And if you, oh, if you want to get the needle, the stitches turned correctly on the needles, you can pass them like this and fix them as you go, like that one's backwards, so you can just sort of make it facing the right way. This one's facing the right way. Uh, nope, that one's backwards. You can just turn it around like that if you want. Looks like these are all backwards. That is okay with me. This one's facing the right way. That is okay with me. We got all of the 10 stitches back. So, and just pass them. That one's backwards. Move it forwards like that. There we go. All right, and we'll turn that one around. Okay, and then you can pass them back, depending on uh, which which side of the piece that you need to be working on. You can pass them back like this if you like. That's your crochet cast on. I think it's the easiest way. It's certainly the easiest to undo. And undoing your provisional cast on is 100% of the reason why we do it. So this is the one I recommend. So there we've got our 10 live stitches. And now we can go and knit the other direction. All right, now you try.